Good morning, Carlson Baptist Church. Welcome. Well, wow. Welcome and thank you for being here on Palm Sunday. It is just a fabulous month or fabulous time to be here where we get to give back to God and say Hosanna ourselves. Amen. Um, there's a couple of things I need to bring to your attention in the bulletin. So if you would go ahead and pull those out. Um, the very first one is the Easter schedule. This is for next Sunday. We will have sunrise service on our front lawn. Um, you can't hear me in the back? They keep saying they can't hear me in the back, E. Anyway, they're having service on the front lawn. Um, they may call for rain. If they call for rain, we'll move inside. But where our plans is to have it right on the front lawn like we always do for sunrise service because it's always a beautiful time. And then we'll have a glorified breakfast. Y'all come and be a part of the breakfast at 8 o'clock. And then at 9 o'clock, take note of that, it's 9 o'clock for our Sunday school hour and 10 o'clock for our worship service, Easter um, worship service. Um, there is going to be a ton of music all next week. Um, it's going to be a fantastic um, time of service and celebration for Easter. So you come and be a part of that. It's going to be great. Um, so come and do that. Next is um, a wa not a wana, children. Um, children, we have our Easter egg hunt. If you're worried that you missed it yesterday, you did not. We actually moved it to today because of all the storms that were happening yesterday. So today, you come from 4 to 5 o'clock um, and come and be, take part of the Easter egg hunt. That's 4 to 5 o'clock. Bring a basket to carry some eggs in and all of that. But you come and it's going to be, I think we're meeting right over here in the Fellowship Hall to start off with. Um, with all of that being said, would you join me in a word of prayer as we start off Palm Sunday service? God, thank you so much, Lord, that you came. You came for the whole purpose, as we studied, studied in Sunday school, Lord, to die. But God, we came, you came, and you were celebrated on this Sunday, Palm Sunday, and rightfully so, Hosanna. God, you came to free us, free us from our sins and free us from um, what was destined for us, hell. And you came to give us that salvation, heaven, and to be with you. And to have a relationship with you. So in that, Lord, we lift you up. And we want to take this service and use it for the uplifting of you. And giving you all the praise and the glory back. Because you are Hosanna. So God, I pray, Lord, that this service does just that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
death could not hold you the veil tore before you you silenced the
Good morning. How are you? Tired. Tired? Same, sister, same. But we've got spring break coming up, right? Soon. Are you looking forward to that? Excited about doing that? Me too. And I promise you, your teachers are too. Just a little note from me to you, I promise. So I have um, a little thing I want to do today. Who is really good at math? Selah? Come here, Selah. All right. So what I want you to do is I'm going to give you a marker and a board. And I want you, don't show me, but I want you to pick a number between 1 and 10. Don't let me see your number. I'm not looking at how she writes it or anything. Tell me when you have your number. You're good? All right, don't let me see it. Now, let me think. Okay. Okay. Now, I'm, I wrote my number here. I'm going to put it right there. I'm putting my marker away like that. Good. Okay, so now, what I need you to do with that number is, don't let me see anything, I need you to add one to that number. If you, you can, like, mark it out, however. Okay, now I need you to double your new number, so, like, multiply that by two. Okay, you got it? Are you good? You sure? All right, now I need you to add four to that number. <clears throat> Okay, you got it? Now I need you to divide your new number by two. Got it? Okay, now subtract your first number from your new number. You got it? Okay. Show everybody your new answer. All right, this is what I guessed was going to be her answer. No. <laughs> Boom! How did I do that? Did you put, did you put the number on somewhere on the wall? There's mirrors in here, right? Right? The, the choir was back there showing me what it, no. That was, everybody, who, who's, who's really awesome? Who's really cool? Some of y'all are like still confused. Good job, Sayla. So I wish I could take credit for that. And it wasn't like I could like see into the future of what, Sayla's number was going to be. It wasn't that. It's actually a little math trick. And math is awesome. I'm a math teacher at heart. And um, it's just, it was a math trick. I can teach you about it later. But I wasn't able to like see into the future about what was going to happen. It was a trick that I did. But in the Bible, there are things that happen or things that were written in the Old Testament that were predictions or not predictions, prophecies of what was going to happen in the future. And as we were talking about being excited about spring break, our spring break is in right there with Easter. And as we are entering into getting ready to celebrate Easter, there are a lot of things that happened in Jesus's life before Easter actually happened. And one of the things is what we call now, what we celebrate today is Palm Sunday. And that was when Jesus entered into Jerusalem and everybody was cheering for him and shouting. Does anybody remember the name, that what they were shouting? Hosanna. Hosanna, that's right. They were shouting Hosanna to Jesus and they were worshiping. They were taking his, their, um, some of their cloaks off and laying it for him to um, walk on. But one of the biggest things that was um, a prophecy from the Old Testament was that he would enter in on a donkey. And that's exactly what he did. And in um, the stories or in the um, New Testament where we're talking about Jesus getting ready to enter into Jerusalem, they were what he tells his disciples to do is to go and get a donkey for him to ride in on. And that was, everybody was kind of not really understanding all of the pieces at that moment, but it was God doing exactly what he said he was going to do. And there's a lot of things that we can pull from this. And as we're celebrating Easter, we can get our hearts and our minds ready for the gift that God gave us in Jesus. And we just, we just sang, uh, the choir sang a beautiful song about Jesus's name and what we celebrate at Easter, that God gave us Jesus so that we could have a way to have eternal life with him. And that's the beautiful thing that we get to celebrate at Easter. But you know what else I pull from it? that what God says he's going to do, he's always going to do it. So when God tells us, 
that he's going to be with us and he's never going to leave us, we can know and believe that that is the truth, that that is what God's going to do. So there's a lot of things as you're getting ready for Easter. We're having an Easter egg hunt today. We're going to have fun things. You're going to spend time with family and all of that. We're going to celebrate um, Easter in fun ways. But let's always remember that we're celebrating the gift that God gave us and that we can trust that God is going to do exactly what he says he's going to do. All right? Let's pray. God, we thank you for the great things that you do for us. And we thank you for the great name of Jesus, the beautiful name Jesus. That, God, you made a way for us when we had no other way. When our sin was too great, God, you made a way. You gave us Jesus for um, our sins to be forgiven. God, Jesus died a death that he did not deserve, but one that he did for us. God, we thank you for that. We thank you for Easter, and we thank you for the, the ability that we have to celebrate Easter and for what it means and the, all, of, all of the stuff behind it. God, we thank you that your prophecies in the Old Testament are what became true in the New Testament. God, it's just another example to us that you are always going to do what you say you're going to do. God, I thank you so much for this church, for um, it being a church that teaches your word, that is founded, and it's, the foundation is your word, Father. I thank you so much for that. And Father, may we just continue as we finish, or we continue into these next few days, and we get ready for Easter, and we shop and do all the stuff that we've um, kind of created it to be. God, help us to not lose focus on the true meaning of Easter. God, we love you and we praise you. It's your name we pray. Amen. comes down this morning. Would you pray with me, please? Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning so we excited, Lord, because of the season. Um, we're excited, Lord, because you're here. You're with us. Uh, we've come to worship you, Lord, here in your house. And dear Lord, we just thank you for this, this season because this season is all about you. Uh, Lord, we know that, that you are here with us. You are alive and you are here to uh, to look after us and take care of us and have us to welcome and praise you. Dear Lord, we thank you for all things that you do for us. We thank you for this, this season and the reason that we can come back and think of what happened and all that you did for us, Lord. How you were beaten and bled and how you accepted all of that willingly, Lord, so that we might be with you forever into the future. Dear Lord, we thank you for the offering that's being taken now. We thank you for uh, what you're going to use it for and how you're going to grow uh, your work here on earth because of it. 
Uh, again, we thank you for just being you, Lord. And we thank you for the ability to be able to come and worship you now. These things we, we ask in your name. Amen. Are you past the point of weary? Is your burden weighing heavy? Is there all too much to carry? Let me tell you about my Jesus. Do you feel that empty feeling? Cause shame's done all it's stealing. And you're desperate for some healing. Let me tell you about my Jesus. He makes a way where there ain't no way Rises up from an empty grave Ain't no sinner that he can't save Let me tell you about my Jesus His love is strong and His grace is free And the good news is I know that He Can do for you what He's done for me Let me tell you about my Jesus and let my Jesus change your life. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen. Who could wipe away the tears from broken dreams and wasted years and tell the past to disappear? Oh. Let me tell you about my Jesus and all the wrong turns that you would go and undo if you could. Who can work it all for your own good? Oh, let me tell you about my Jesus. He makes a way where there ain't no way. Rises up from an empty grave. Ain't no sinner that he can't save. Let me tell you about my Jesus. His love is strong and His grace is free And the good news is I know that He can do for you what He's done for me Let me tell you about my Jesus And let my Jesus change your life Hallelujah 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 Amen 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 Take my cross from Calvary, pay the price for all my guilty. Who would care that much about me? Let me tell you about my Jesus. Oh, he makes a way where there ain't no way, rises up from an empty grave. Ain't no sinner that he can't save. Let me tell you about my Jesus. His love is strong and His grace is free And the good news is I know that He could do for you what He's done for me Let me tell you about my Jesus And let my Jesus change your life Hallelujah 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 Amen Amen Hallelujah, 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 let my Jesus change your life. Thank you very much. I just wanted to put one word in here. Before uh, we start our message, uh, did y'all see Zane leading that first song this morning up here? That was not dancing, that was interpretive movement. For those of you, <laughs> for those of you who don't like dancing in the church, that was interpretive movement, okay? But uh, thank you so much. Thank you for all who participated in the music today. If you were in Sunday school this morning, we talked about the death and burial of Jesus Christ. Uh, I'm going to take you back to Palm Sunday now during the service. Uh, Palm Sunday was the Sunday that Jesus entered into Jerusalem 
uh, the last time before he, well, the, to enter into the week before he was crucified that week. Uh, and that was a week that was important in Jerusalem because it was the week before Passover. There was a lot of preparation going on. Uh, and it's just a lot of people were crowded into that city. But when Jesus entered in that day, it was very special for those who believed in Jesus, those who were his disciples. And I want us to see that as we start the service. So would you join me in prayer? Father, thank you today for our opportunity to come and worship on this Palm Sunday. Help us, Lord, to place ourselves back in that day when Jesus entered on a donkey. Help us to understand the emotions, help us to grasp the feelings, and help us to understand and see why Jesus is King of kings and Lord of lords. And Father, how do we see Jesus in our lives today? For it's in your name we pray. Amen. Is this Jesus of Nazareth? He's a prophet, a great prophet. A prophet? On a donkey? Blessings <laughs> to the healer of the sick! You have come to deliver us! Isaiah 10, Jerusalem, daughter of Zion, behold thy king! Come up unto thee, humble and meek. Son of David! Master, you are the hope of Israel! You are our prophet and our savior! Jesus is the prophet of Israel! Bless us, Master! Peace be What an exciting scene that we just saw as Jesus entered into Jerusalem. I want us to stop and think what was really happening in that scene. So I want us to go to Scripture and see how the Scripture describes it in Luke chapter 19, beginning with verse 28. It says, After Jesus had said this, he went on ahead going up to Jerusalem. As he approached Bethpage and Bethany at the hill called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it, say, the Lord needs it. Those who were sent ahead went and found it, just as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, why are you untying the colt? They replied, the Lord needs it. They brought it to Jesus threw their cloaks on the colt, and put Jesus on it. As he went along, people spread their cloaks on the road. When he came near the place where the road goes down the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices for all the miracles they had seen. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. I tell you, he replied, if, it, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. There are many things happening in this passage and in this scene. Many things that we need to question and understand today. Why did Jesus, first of all, enter into Jerusalem this way? Why did he come in on a donkey? If he is king of kings and lord of lords, 
you would think he would enter in on a large, strong horse. That's how the uh, kings rode and entered in that day, or they would enter in a chariot. But Jesus chose to come in on a donkey. Why? Because, first of all, it fulfilled prophecy. In Zechariah 9, 9, we are told, Rejoice greatly, daughter of Zion. Shout, daughter of Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you, righteous and victorious, lowly and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. We've got to remember that in what was happening, it was all planned ahead by God. And it was all predicted in the Old Testament. And what the writers are trying to do is trying to show that Jesus is the Messiah. And to do this, they show him fulfilling prophecy. Now, they also want to show Jesus uh, coming in his first way that he entered into Jerusalem that time. He came humbly into Jerusalem. He came to complete God's purpose that God had for him. That's why he entered as he did. Now, second, I want you to see during this passage that choices were being made. Choices were being made in people's minds of who Jesus was. We see here that the disciples of Jesus chose to call him king. Here's what they say, blessed in verse 19, chapter, verse, but verse, chapter 19, verse 38. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Now, when we talk about the disciples choosing Jesus here as king, we saw it in what we just saw in that film where the crowd was gathered around him with palm branches. These were disciples of Jesus. They were not just the 12 apostles. There were more than just the 12 apostles that were disciples. Those who were, those who were listening to Jesus' teachings, those who were beginning to understand a little bit how, who Jesus was, these were all part of the group of disciples. And by this point in his three years of ministry on this earth, there were probably 300 to 500 dedicated disciples of Jesus. And this is the crowd that we see gathered around him, hailing him as king of kings as he enters into Jerusalem that day. Now, some of the Pharisees were also in the crowd. I don't know if you picked them out. They were the ones in the garments uh, that flowed down. Uh, they were the religious leaders for the Jewish people that were in Israel. They were the religious leaders who kept guard on the Jewish people. They watched over everything. And they had decided over Jesus' three years of earthly ministry that Jesus was a threat to them. They saw Jesus, if you saw in the very first scene, one of them said that he is a prophet or a teacher. The Pharisees chose only to see Jesus as a prophet or a teacher. They refused to see past that to see who Jesus really was. They were actually developing a fear of Jesus because they were threatened as the crowds grew larger for Jesus that he might overtake their power that they had as the leaders of the Jewish people. So they were actually afraid of Jesus to some point at this point in his ministry. So the fair, we see that the disciples chose to see him as king of kings. The Pharisees chose to see Jesus only as a prophet or a teacher. I wonder, how do you choose to see Jesus? I don't know if you noticed, but there were others in the crowd. This was actually a very, very crowded time in the city of Jerusalem. As I said earlier, this was right before Passover, and pilgrimages were being made by thousands of people to Jerusalem to celebrate Passover. Now, what is Passover? Passover is the Jewish celebration of when God delivered his people from, from the Egyptians. Remember all the plagues that happened, and then the final plague when the death angel passed over and took the firstborn from every home. With those Jews who had placed the blood of a lamb on their doorpost the night before, uh, the death angel passed over, they were able to not have their firstborn taken. And this finally scared the Pharaoh so bad that he allowed the Jews to leave Egypt 
and to go back to their promised land. So they celebrated every year the Passover. And so they had come into the city to get ready for the Passover. It was very important and a very holy day for the, uh, for the, Egypt, for the Israelites. So we have that crowd also there. How did they see Jesus? For a lot of them that were coming from other places, they had never even heard of Jesus. I think about today the crowds that are around in our land and the crowds around the world. Uh, we don't understand how populated I think sometimes that the planet really is because we're not as crowded here in our United States. But there are some countries in the world that are billions of people, so packed in and so tight. And the sad thing is that many of those billions of people do not know Jesus as Savior and Lord. Many of them have never even heard of him. Many of them have never had the opportunity to learn about Jesus. So if they were to choose, Jesus, to choose how to see Jesus today, they would choose to see Jesus as someone they have never heard of. I think about people in the United States. Are there people right here in our own homeland that has never heard about Jesus? Would they choose to be totally ignorant to who Jesus really is? If that's the case, then we need to be doing our job. We need to be telling others about Jesus. But then I think about those that are even in churches today across the United States of America and around the world. There are so many in churches today that choose Jesus not because he's King of Kings or Lord of Lords, but for other reasons. Some, unfortunately, choose Jesus because that's who in their family chose. The family chooses Jesus, so they decide they're going to go to church as they go to church. There are those who are in church today sometimes for other reasons, for political gains, material gains, whatever, just to make connections with people. But I hope and pray that we're here this morning because we have chose Jesus as the King of Kings, that we understand who he really is. If we were in that crowd that day, where would you be standing? Would you be standing somewhere with the Pharisees who chose to see Jesus only as a teacher or a prophet, and they were threatened by what he said? Would you be with the crowd that had never seen Jesus before and had no idea who Jesus was? Or would you be part of the disciples that would be shouting and praising Jesus as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. I would pray today that we would be shouting today in our country and in the world who Jesus is, as the world needs to hear and know the real Jesus. Now, not only were these things happening in this passage, but there was something else happening here. Jesus was prophesying even as he entered that day. In verse 41, as we continue in the passage, Jesus, as he approached Jerusalem and saw the city, he wept over it and said, If you, even you, had only known on this day what would bring you peace, but now it is hidden from your eyes. Jesus had just crossed from the Mount of Olives, which was the mount on the opposite side of the Jerusalem Mount from the Kidron Valley. And he looked over Jerusalem, and his heart was broken because he knew that they were rejecting him, that they were not seeing him as king of kings and lord of lords. And this is why he makes this statement. If you, even you, had only known on this day what would bring you peace, but now it is hidden from your eyes. They did not understand. They did not see. He goes on to say, The days will come upon you when your enemies will build an embankment against you and encircle you and hem you in on every side. They will dash you to the ground, you and the children within your walls. They will not leave one stone on another, because you did not recognize the time of God's coming to you. Now, Jesus spoke these words somewhere between A.D. 30 and A.D. 33, 
according to which calendar you look at. And in A.D. 70, the Roman Empire decided that they were tired of dealing with the Jews. So they decided that they were going to wipe out the city of Jerusalem. And from A.D. 66 to A.D. 70, they had a vicious campaign on the city of Jerusalem. They actually murdered thousands of Jews at that point. The ones they did not murder, they took into slavery and used them as slaves throughout the kingdom. They destroyed the city of Jerusalem. They destroyed the temple and burned the temple down. If you were to go there today, you would see stones like this stacked around where the temple used to be because these were stones were part of part of that temple structure. Jesus just predicted that that day when he entered into Jerusalem. He said exactly what was going to happen because they rejected him. Jesus knew that Jerusalem would be destroyed by the Romans in A.D. 70. He knew what was coming. God would bring judgment on the Israelites once again. That was the history of the Israelites with God. There would be a period where they would recognize him as God and they would worship him. Then they would turn their backs on him and stop, start worshiping other gods. And then God would bring judgment and punishment on them. They would repent and they would return back to worshiping God again. Unfortunately, at this time, when Jesus entered into Jerusalem, they were mostly at the point where they were denying God and denying who Jesus really was. And they had turned their backs on Jesus. And because of that, destruction came to them. To this day, to this very day, 2,000 years later, the temple still has not been rebuilt in Jerusalem. In fact, the Jews do not even own the temple mount at this very moment in Jerusalem. I want to ask you today, what is your choice when it comes to Jesus? Do you see him as the Messiah? Do you understand that he is the answer to all of the prophecies given in the Old Testament, that he is the fulfillment of what God promised that he would do for man, the one God sent to save his people from their sins? Do you recognize him as King of kings and Lord of lords? Think about that in a very personal way in your life. Who makes the choices in your life? If you follow culture today, culture would tell you that you make the choices in your life. I want you to know that God never intended for us to be totally in control of our lives. God always intended for him to be in control of our lives. Why? Because God created us. God has a plan for us. God wants us to have fulfillment in our lives. He wants us to have purpose in our lives. And to do that, we have to let him be in control. So today, do we recognize him as king of kings and lord of lords? If you do, then you allow him to be in control of your life. You allow him to be the lord of your life. Or do you simply see Jesus as a person somewhere back there in history? Something that happened somewhere back in time? Or do you see him for who he really is? But I want you to know that that time that Jesus entered into Jerusalem that day, and there was that celebration that day, that's not the only time there's going to be a celebration. There is coming a day when Jesus is coming back again. Amen. And believe me, what happened on Palm Sunday does not even hold a candle to what's going to happen on that day when Jesus returns. In Revelation chapter 1, verse 7, we are told about that triumphal entry. It says, Behold, he is coming with the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And all the tribes of earth will well on account of him. Even so, amen. Jesus is going to come back. There is no doubt about it. There is no question in that fact. And when he comes back the second time, it will not be just a few that will recognize who he really is. When he comes back the second time, there will be no denying 
who Jesus really is. He will be recognized as the creator of all the universe. He will be recognized as the king of all the universe. He will be recognized as Savior and Lord of everything. Jesus will be recognized for who he really is. Unfortunately, there will be those who have not accepted Jesus as Savior and Lord at that point. But they will at that day understand who he really is, but it will be too late. Remember what Jesus said when he looked at Jerusalem and he said that their eyes were closed, their minds were closed? That's exactly what's going to happen when Jesus returns. It's too late. It's too late to accept him as King of Kings and Lord of Lords when that happens. It says in Revelation eleven fifteen, Then the seventh angel sounded, and there were loud voices in heaven saying, The kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ, and he will reign forever and ever. Amen. The Jews were looking for a king that day. They were looking for someone who would defeat the Roman control over them, the Roman Empire that told them everything they were to do and taxed them so heavily and made life so miserable for them. They were looking for a king who would run the Roman Empire out of Israel. That's who they were looking for that day. They did not see Jesus, for the most part, as that king. But that's what they wanted. Jesus came that day to become king of kings and lord of lords of all of mankind. Not just the Israelites, but all who would accept him as their savior and lord. He came so that we could all have victory in him. We could all have freedom. We could all be set free from the penalty and the consequences of sin. It's in the Revelation eleven fifteen again, it says, The kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ, and he will reign forever and ever. I want to ask you this morning, do you recognize Jesus as King of Kings? We're entering into this Easter week to celebrate Easter. And we have it decorated so beautifully in the sanctuary today. Thankful, I'm very thankful to the ladies who did this. But do you know there are some in our congregation today that what we see up here, what they see up here, actually means nothing to them? There are so many in our city today that they're not looking forward to Easter to celebrate the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. They're just looking forward to Easter because they might get Good Friday off from their jobs. So it's a long holiday weekend for them. And we look at our nation as we approach Easter. And we see sin so evident on every street corner. We see sin in our faces, in our media. We see so many things that are in the face of God, mocking him as they continue to promote all of these evil things. And you think, how does our nation see Jesus at Easter? I think about the things that are being promoted in our country right now. Do you think all of these special groups recognize Jesus as King of Kings? Will Easter mean anything to them? And then there are those who really love Easter because of what it really is. They recognize that on Easter, God gave his one and only son to die for the sins of mankind. And on Easter Sunday, he came forth from that grave to give us victory. Victory over the consequences of sin. The devil has been defeated through Jesus Christ. That's what it's all about. As Jesus entered Jerusalem... For that hard week that was ahead for him. There were a few hundred who shouted King of Kings and Lord of Lords. 
I wonder when Jesus come back, comes back, how many will be shouting, King of kings and Lord of lords. My prayer is that you will be one of them. That you will know Jesus for who he really is. Even today, God might be dealing with your heart to accept Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord. Won't you today let Jesus into your heart and into your life? Would you join me as we pray? Father, thank you today for allowing us to look at the Sunday that Jesus entered into Jerusalem before the week would unfold that would lead to his crucifixion. Father, there were those in the crowd who had mixed emotions and different understandings of who Jesus was that day. Father, there are those in our sanctuary today, those in our city, and those in the world who have different understandings of who Jesus really is. But Lord, I know there's coming a day when there will be no doubt of who Jesus really is, that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Father, I just pray before Jesus comes back that all who do not know Jesus will come to know him as their personal Savior and Lord, that they will repent of their sins through what Christ did for them on the cross and seek his forgiveness and his cleansing. And they will invite Jesus Christ into their lives. Father, even today, may someone come to know Jesus as Savior and Lord and shout out in their heart, King of kings and Lord of lords. For it's in his name we pray. Amen.